Hey, welcome to the second season, and uh, boy, doesn't this one start out on a high note? That boy, was this a this is a good start. <laughs> this is a really good start uh, to this season. Uh, first of all, yeah, I, I knew it, man. I knew that girl was gonna come back. Um, uh, that that is Azula. That is the sister of um, of Zuko. Uh, and obviously, once you know that, it's like, oh, dude, these. That they're gonna be enemies when he gets his face burned, you know, she's like, yeah, yeah, teach him, dad. Um, so, so she's now a character that's supposed to go and, uh, pretty much hunt down Zuko and his uncle, because the father's like, I'm sick of him, I want him out, uh, I don't want him mucking things up. Um, so, so she looks like is gonna be the prominent villain now, and we also have, at the end of this episode, we, we, we get Zuko and the uncle, um, if I read it right, it looks like, you know, they cut off, <laughs> for Zuko, all that's left of his hair, uh, and, and for the uncle, they, they both cut off their ponytails, which I'm assuming means they're just, they're, they're leaving the Fire Nation, um, and, uh, which would be interesting to see where they, where they go with that, uh, but on top of that, you also have th this great story going on with, uh, Aang trying to figure out why does he become what I guess they call now the Avatar State. Uh, when his eyes glow and the tattoos glow and so they tattooed this kid? You know, it just it just hit me, like, didn't that hurt him? <laughs> it, it never actually hit me uh, until I thought about that, but okay, so, so bottom line, yeah, he glows um, and, and becomes all powerful. And they come across this, uh, this earthbending nation, or, or uh, the earthbending colony that wants to go after the Fire Nation, they're tired of this war, they're tired of people dying for this war, and they figure the sooner they can get the Avatar to figure out how to do this Avatar state, like he did at the end of the last season, the sooner they can stop all this killing. And that's really tough for... Again, it's a great responsibility for our main character. Much more than in Man of Steel! I didn't fucking Man of Steel talk about this. Eh? I'm sorry. As I'm recording this, it's still a few days after seeing Man of Steel. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, so you have this uh, you have this responsibility that he's toying with that he knows he's not quite ready, or at least he doesn't have it under control. Actually, it's to a point where now he's he's afraid of the power because he's not in control of it, and he's having bad dreams that if he's not in control, like it will hurt things and people that he holds very dear. So that can be, you know, that's something to be cautious of. But at the same time, every minute he's not doing it, more and more people are dying. And, you know, that's a good, that's a good dilemma there. And it's very hard to choose. And, uh, and Katara has her thoughts and he has his thoughts and they're, and they're trying to figure it out. Uh, and the Earth Nation, or the Earth Bending Nation, uh, the king of it is like, oh, so it only works if you seem to be in incredible danger. Okay, and, and tries to, tries to kick his ass pretty much. It basically tries to kill him to get him to release this. And when he finds out that's not working, a, a great line says you can't run forever. And Aang says you can't fight forever. That's the good line there. Uh, so it comes across Katara. Uh, she tries to help and he realizes, oh, wait, if I sink her, you know, he'll probably, that'll get him mad, that'll get him crazy, and it's a very intense scene. I mean, like, you sort of know they're not gonna kill her off, I mean, that just seemed very unlikely, but they, again, especially for a kid show, they were really hammering in, you know, sort of the, the, the heart pounding there. Uh, you know, she's sinking closer and closer, and he's saying, give in to the Avatar, give in to the state, give in to the, you know, she will die, she will die, and he's trying, he doesn't know how, he's tearing up as this is going. It's a very intense scene. Um, and of course she's fine. I don't know how he just pulled her out of the ground, it's a little weird, but, uh, you know, whatever, fancy, I, I don't know how it works. Um, so, again, we see him, we see him go nuts at a moment, I think it's only the second time where he unleashes this and it's not really called for. It, it, the, the first time was when he saw his old master, uh, the, the body of his old master, and then this time. All the other times it was to save the day or, uh, or get out of a situation. Here, you know, those other two times, it was just pure anger, it was pure emotion. 
uh, and there was no real responsibility to it. Uh, although, um, you could almost argue, but no, she, she's, he thinks she's dead, so, you know, this was something he couldn't control, and thus, he can't control it, he pretty much wipes out a good chunk of that city, and he sees the damage he's caused, and again, it just reiterates how important it is for him to understand this and get under control. Oh, and God, then, then you find out this horrible news, this, this information that if he's in this state and he's killed, the reincarnation will no longer happen. So even when he does it, he has to be really careful about it. Now, granted, he's like this really unstoppable thing. You know, I mean, it's unlikely someone would or could kill him. But at the same time, it's like, dude, that's even more pressure to throw on this. So I, I really like that they're throwing... He's getting more and more of this responsibility and, and, and trying to understand it. And they're showing... It, they don't just throw stuff, they don't just throw rules, and then he has to, you know, uh, learn by them or whatever. He, he's letting them, they're giving time to let those rules and those emotions sink in. Uh, and what it means and the responsibility. Uh, because that that's what you would do. If you heard this news, you had these abilities, and these, you know, this new information was brought to light that could seriously damage you, if not kill you, or damage and kill others close to you, you would take the time to sit down and really think it out. And I like that they show him doing that, they show all the characters doing that. That's something this show has, I think, over many other, uh, and not just kid sh action shows, I should say. Shows that emphasize uh, the adventure aspect. And they do show, they do take the time to show them having it really sink in and having conversations about it and discussing it. So I really like that. And it's always, it's made better that it's with kids. Because uh, again, that, that's good role model for kids. And then I, I love the fact that not just kids, but adults. I love the fact that the show is a hit. I, I'm glad that this really caught on because there is so much smart stuff and it really deserves it. it deserves the attention again so i'm really happy about that something i do realize though is that okay you got the fire lord he says i'm done with it. my brothers betrayed me and my nephews betrayed me you my daughter you must go and and destroy them and and bring them back so we can keep them in prison they won't be doing any more harm and stuff you know the general that general malfoy guy I never did learn his name, I'm sorry. Uh, but he's saying, you know, I, what, the Avatar is just a kid? Ha, huh, we can get him. And then when uh, Zuko comes, he's like, you know, I can't have a teenager trying to tell me what to do and stuff. It seems like this Fire Nation is, it's being run by mostly kids. <laughs> you got Zuko, you got the daughter, our main, you know, the Avatar is a kid. So, <laughs> I, I don't know what the big problem is. I just assume that most of the kids in this world are like running half the stuff. Um, but again, I, I like, especially for a kid's show, I like that the adults really do respect the kids, and they do listen to them, and they, in many respects, they do treat them very much like adults, but not forgetting that they are children, and that they are learning, so it's, it's still aware that they are children, but it still treats them with a lot of dignity, and I think that's important, I think that's very important for kids' shows, and movies, a anything, uh, you know, that's entertainment for kids. So, I think that's about it for this episode. It's it just, it laid on a lot of good information. There, there's, again, good action in it. Uh, good, uh, good stuff with the villains. I like this new villain. Oh, the, you know what? Last thing I'll ask about, or talk about, I should say. You can't respond. I'm a video. You can't, I won't hear you. Um, so, I guess now they can control electricity, or at least this... Zula character is learning how to control electricity as well as fire and it did make me sort of question where is electricity in this world because it seems like it doesn't exist you know like there's a lot of places where they light torches and everything's made out of rock and wood and such but then again they have subs and they're you think there had to be some electricity on that damn thing so I am wondering how exactly this works but I'm, I'm sure they'll go into it. 
I, I like seeing her learn this, and Zuko seemed legitimately shocked that she could do this. Um, but I like that the uncle seemed to know it, too. I, I liked when she was going to do the the shock there that the uncle grabbed the hand and shot it out of his hand. I thought that was pretty cool. We did see that one other time, didn't we? When, like, lightning struck or something like that. So, so maybe this isn't entirely foreign, but it, it, again, it's just another, another little addition to add there to make the story more interesting and throw in more twists and turns. So, yeah, it's a great start. I really want to see where this is going to go. And they established so much in this first episode, but they didn't... They didn't hammer it in too much, and they let it sink in with everybody, too. They let them really realize what every choice means and what it's going to result in. So, I really like this episode a lot. I thought it was very, uh, very well done. The Avatar State, if I, if I didn't say that title yet. So, yes, uh, really enjoyed it. See you at episode two of season two.